So two days later, it was actually horrific snow. I got halfway to Lincoln and I heard on the radio that the hills to Lincoln were shut. The police had stopped it because cars and lorries were getting stuck. And to get to Lincoln Hospital, I had to go up a lot of hills and I just wasn't gonna make it. And it took me an hour and a half to do a 30 minute journey. That's how bad the snow was. So I couldn't possibly go back for the blood tests. But I kept doing my pregnancy tests and they were still saying um, three plus. Um, the last one I did said two to three and then I did one again and it said three plus so it had gone up. So part of me was hopeful, maybe maybe I am earlier somehow, maybe I ovulated later or I don't know but in the back of my head I was just hoping that everything was going to be okay and maybe the levels were going to double. So I finally went back after a few days and had the um, other blood test done and I had to wait a few hours for a phone call. David was normally due to come home that night but he had arranged to do some overtime at work and it was horrific snow so we didn't think he would be able to get back anyway. My kids were with me, um, it wasn't their dad's weekend to have them or anything. So the nurse phoned me and said basically my levels had gone up but they hadn't doubled which meant they thought it was an ectopic pregnancy. And I will link some links down below to ectopic pregnancy and about hyperemesis and anything else that I think might help. Um, so she said basically I could it could rupture at any point, my life was in danger, I had to come in straight away and I had to stay overnight and I would have to have surgery to remove the baby from my fallopian tube. Um, as a matter of urgency and I said there is no possible way on earth I can get into hospital tonight. My husband is two and a half hours away but it's snowing so he won't be able to come back and I've got three kids that haven't got anywhere to stay. I could probably sort the older two out but my little one had never stayed away from me um, and I wasn't willing to do that. Now um, I've had the consultant review your titles, your blood results. Yeah. Okay, and uh, Dr. Fields, this is a pregnancy of unknown location, okay? Yeah. Yeah, so we haven't ruled out an ectopic pregnancy, sweetheart. Okay. So a pregnancy growing where it shouldn't grow. Okay. Okay, and she wants you to come to the ward this evening. Okay. To be assessed. Okay. Now, there is a possibility that you might need to stay over. Okay. You need, you need to bring a bag for a couple of days. Okay, um, okay. I've got, um, my husband works away and he's been caught up in this snow so he's not actually here. And I've got um, kids at home so I'm not really sure how that's going to work. Um, right. Is there any other option? Well no, because you see this is an ectopic pregnancy. Yeah. Okay, and you need to come to the Oh, no. Well, I think the with the blood results in the scan, I think the the, the, the uh, consultant is thinking that it's looking more likely that it would be an ectopic return. Right, okay. And that we would need to do something about it. Oh, and if, you know, it, just, if it was in your floating tube, I don't know where it is. Yeah. And it got big, because obviously the floating tube is designed to take a pregnancy. Exactly, yeah. Right, okay. And I hadn't been in any pain, I hadn't had any bleeding or anything in the last like seven weeks. So 12 more hours, to me, I could stay at home. And that's what I did against what they wanted me to do. But in the end, they just said, can you come in early in the morning? And obviously we'll see you as early as we can. So. I rang David and I told him and he did actually drive home that night. It took him four hours to do a two hour journey because of the snow. So I was panicking he weren't gonna get home. So early in the morning on the Saturday, we went to the hospital. My sister-in-law and my brother had Ellie for me. The kids were still at their dad's. David was with me, so I packed an overnight bag and everything and we made our way to the hospital. Now, the ward I had to go to was the ward I went to all of those times when I was pregnant with Ellie and I had hyperemesis. 
and at the time I hated that ward I thought they were a bit well they didn't seem they did they didn't seem to be many patients on that ward but they always seemed to be lots of nurses and they never really seemed to be doing anything I mean I could be completely wrong I'm not sure but that's just the impression that I got anyway so when I got there I was expected to be seen straight away because they told me that my life was in danger and you know it was a matter of urgency that I went there last night and everything like that no word of a lie I sat in the waiting room for 90 minutes before anyone came to me that is how important it was that I got there what a joke so yeah I sat there for an hour and a half I was already nervous I was scared I didn't know what the hell was going to happen but basically to cut a long story short I was there for 11 hours I sat in the waiting room only I never had a bed I never had a comfy chair they never offered me any food or drink I tell a lie they offered me two cups of tea but I didn't eat anything all day because the um, cafes in the hospital were shut I don't know if it was because it was the weekend or it was snowing or whatever but I had to send David away um, to get me a sandwich um, yeah the care I received on that ward I think was quite poor considering I had an ectopic pregnancy I feel I should have been in a bed I should have been looked after more instead I was sat in a waiting room as I saw pregnant people coming and going which you know I really didn't want to see to be honest uh, but yeah cut a long story short they did blood tests um, after blood test after blood test to the point where my veins wouldn't give any more blood they examined me, they did so many things and it was decided, yep, I had an ectopic pregnancy. I could either have the injection, which I didn't know anything about, which I will also link some information about down below. There was the, in the injection which would um, make the cells, or the, it's a cancer drug and it breaks up cells, but it also can break up like the cells of a fetus. Um, and because I was quite early this option was available or I could go to theatre and have it removed that way but there was a chance I would remove a fallopian tube or it could cause you know any any damage or whatever and the way they sold this injection to me was easy like I have an injection and I go home that's it um, oh yeah you might get a few side effects but it's it's not very common um, because you're only going to have one injection you know blah 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 basically I decided to go for the injection because I thought it would be the quickest and easiest less evasive way of ending this pregnancy if that was what was going to have to happen so then they wanted more blood from me which they couldn't do so they had to try and use the blood that had already taken that morning and I was waiting for hours and hours and hours they wouldn't do the injection on that ward I had to go to another ward which was the cancer patient ward right at the end of the hospital and I had to wait for them to um, say that there was space for me to go down there and by this point it was like six o'clock at night and my kids um, needed to come home Ellie had been away from me since like 8 o'clock in the morning, my kids hadn't seen me since the day before but I wanted David with me so I said to David you're going to have to go and get the kids and I will let you know when I'm ready to come home and I really didn't want to be on my own when I had the injection um, but I was just so fed up of that bloody ward and sitting in a waiting room on a hard chair all day that I just wanted it over with, I just wanted to go home. So I just said, look, go and get the kids and um, I'll text you when you can come and pick me up. And I was really upset because I wanted him there to hold my hand when I had the injection to end the pregnancy, basically. Sorry. So yeah, he went and I stayed there in the same chair that I'd been in all day. Um, I told them that I was not happy, that, you know, I think that the treatment I'd received wasn't very good, they had all these empty beds and I just still ended up being sat on a chair. David then came back, he surprised me and all the kids came back so he just said that by my texts I was feeling really down and I didn't want to be doing it on my own so he decided that he wasn't going to wait for me to text him to say to come back, he was just going to come back so that's what he did bless him so uh, I had cuddles with the kids and we just waited in the waiting room 
and then um, I got wheeled down eventually at around 8 o'clock at night. Um, they had said I could have stayed in by this point, I could have stayed over the night and I was like no, I just want to get home, I'm fed up, I'm hungry, I had nothing to eat. So they wheeled me down to the cancer ward and they put me in my own room for the first time in 10 hours nearly and I had a bed to sit on which was really nice. I actually felt comfy for the first time all day. So we waited for the injection, the lady came in and gave me the terms and conditions, just gave me a, a massive sheet to read about what the injection was for, what it would do, what was in it, what side effects I might have. I had to sign a consent form and all that jazz. And she said it was going to be um, just at the top of my bum and they have to do it in a muscle and it was going to be two injections, one each side. So I was like, well, do I stand up? Do I lay down? What do I do? She said, oh, it's up to you. And I said, well, OK, I'll stand up. There was no privacy or anything like my husband and my kids were sat right in front of me while I had an injection in each bum cheek. Well, just above the bum cheek. Like there was no curtain or anything. And I just felt like really vulnerable in a way. And as she was doing the injection, I was just like, this is ending my pregnancy. And I was really upset. Um, I know that it was ectopic by now and that it wasn't going to progress anyway, but to have an injection to knowingly end your pregnancy was really hard. Um, yeah. And then we had to wait for like an hour there was confusion over where I was going to go, do I stay on that ward, do I go up to the other ward where I was before. So we ended up staying in that room for half an hour and we were like, well we were told we could go after half an hour and she said no you have to wait an hour. So after half an hour they wheeled me back all the way to the other end of the hospital to the ward I was in before. Um, and I was like I don't want to stay here anymore, I just want to go. Can I go? And they did let me go. I'd had a cannula in my arm all day and it was really hurting me. So I said, can you please take this out? So they took that out and they said if anything, if I got any pain or anything that I wasn't happy with, if I felt really poorly or anything, then to come back. So we left the hospital at around half nine on a Saturday night and I'd, and I'd arrived at nine o'clock in the morning nearly, or just before. It had been a long whole day and all I'd eaten all day was a sandwich and two cups of tea. So I said to David, can we go to McDonald's? So we had a McDonald's on the way home and I thought I'd better eat this now because if I'm going to get sick from all the side effects that this injection is going to give me then I might not be able to eat. So yeah, we got home after the McDonald's and we got all the kids to bed and everything. Well, actually when I was in the hospital, before I had the injection, I had started to bleed and I also had a pain in my right side. If I hadn't have gone to the hospital for a scan to find out it was ectopic, I would have just started bleeding at home and not really known what was going on. Um, and maybe it would have ruptured there, I don't know, but it was just weird how I started bleeding when I was in the hospital for the ectopic pregnancy. I went to bed when I got home and I bealed my eyes out. I cried and I cried and I cried and I just kept thinking if only it had swam a little bit further it would have made it to where it should have been and it, everything would have been okay. And I was really, really emotional. And then the next morning, the Sunday morning, I didn't get out of bed till nearly dinner time because I was just so emotional. I just felt empty and I was bleeding. Even though it wasn't planned, even though at the start I, I said I couldn't have it, I very quickly wanted it and it was part of me and yeah it might not have been a proper fetus because it was so early it might it might have just been a bunch of cells but to me it was my baby and the baby would have been due about three or four days after Sophie's birthday so that was going to be in October so yeah I was really um really low that morning but then I had to pick myself up because my kids were downstairs and they needed to see me so I just put a smile on my face and we just had a PJ day basically um, I didn't really do a lot I was just trying to rest and we just watched some films my dad came over and um, David had to go back to work that night so the Monday after my stepdad and my mum helped me 
so the next day I took the kids to school. I, mean, I did manage to take the kids to school, even though I started to feel really sick. And I took Ellie to nursery, so I had the whole day like to myself. So I just had a bath and um, to be honest, I just cried all day on the sofa listening to really sad songs and I felt really sick and tired and exhausted and Monday wasn't a very good day at all. It was really, really hard. The rest of the week, I didn't really go out. I just stayed at home. Um, one day I'd be okay, the next day I would be crying and stuff. I had to go back to the hospital a few times that week for blood tests to see if my HCG levels had gone down. They bruised me really badly. My blood, my veins were just not wanting to give any blood. So they had to try numerous of times. Um, and my HCG levels were still not really going down. Pregnancy tests were still saying like three weeks and then they did go down to two to three weeks but they didn't go down any further than two to three weeks. So now I have to um, go back on Friday, which is tomorrow, to have another blood test to see if they've gone down any more. And I'm hoping that the HCG levels will have gone down below 15 so they can just sign me off and I don't have to go back anymore. Yesterday was a really bad day for me. I just felt, I just woke up in the morning and I felt like I'd been hit by a ton of bricks. I just felt so low. But today I don't feel like I did yesterday so I just want to remember this pregnancy, I want to remember how I felt and I want to document it and I just hope that I get a good reaction and I don't get any bad comments because I don't think I could cope with any bad comments or anything. I just want to be able to help people that are possibly going through what I am and if they can find some sort of comfort, comfort knowing that other people have gone through it and you know it's not an easy thing then it will be worth it. Um, so yeah, this is probably one of the um, most honest videos I've ever done and yeah, I'm pleased that I've done it and I will never forget the little one and I haven't even deleted the pregnancy app off my phone yet so I'm like punishing myself by keeping these reminders but I just can't bring myself to remove the app, it's really weird and I've also said to my husband that I want to go on holiday around the time the baby was going to be due because otherwise it's going to be really hard. So we're looking at going on holiday in October. And he keeps saying, you know, we could try again for a baby, maybe towards the end of the year or something. Which I might do, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, but it's this baby that I wanted. Like, this is the baby that I wanted and this is the one that I'm not going to have. so hard but I'll be okay I will be okay I'm getting stronger like I was okay the first half of this week I was fine and then the last couple of days it's just yeah just bothered me a little bit and I've been a bit more emotional but yeah I'm glad I've done this video and I really hope that I've helped somebody and thank you very much if you've got this far and I apologize once again for the length of it but I just didn't want to sugarcoat it I didn't want to make it any shorter I wanted to be really honest and just say how I really felt show my emotions and everything like that so yeah it would mean a lot to me if you did hit that like button if you did hit that like button and please subscribe if you haven't already and yeah thanks ever so much for watching bye bye